Inspired and tired, that's the gist of our podcast. Inspired, but we're tired. Should we create or should we take a nap? Create. Nap. We should definitely nap. Chase, we're doing the show. That's right. Of course we're doing the show. Yeah. No, that's what I said. That's what, yeah. Inspired and Tired with your hosts, Chase and London. Hello, you're listening to Inspired and Tired with your host, Chase and London. Hi, Chase. Hi, London. I'm so excited to unblock today. Oh, um, listen, me too. I can't believe we're on week 10. For those of you just tuning in, this is a new podcast about... Um, what is it? What, are, what A are new we? podcast about creativity <laughs> and how to unlock your creative life. Oh, yeah. How to unlock and unblock. unblock. Yeah. Exactly. Um, We've been going through the book, The Artist's Way. It's an amazing book. And we finally made it to week 10 out of 12 weeks. And it's it's amazing when you get to this place in this book because it is not easy. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I would say it's not an amazing book book by any means but it's an amazing tool on how to unlock yes well said i think we make fun of the author a lot lot. of the things that she says but we do it lightly yeah we take it all lightly she's funny she is the biggest comedian but there's so many tools that we've been learning and it's so helpful we've done the artist way so many times we always do it together, so we're doing it with you. We're on chapter 10. Woo! 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 Okay, yes! Yes! <laughs> Week 10, recovering a sense of self-protection. If this is your first episode that you're listening to, um, feel free to go back to episode one where we start on chapter one. I, I feel like that's probably self-explanatory, but yeah. wanted to, wanted to, you know give them an option okay (laughs) in week 10 we search out the toxic patterns that we cling to that block our creative flow and it is a doozy because this is like where you have to really do your self work and I like how this chapter starts out because she talks about a prism and I just love prisms you know those those things that are like clear yeah and then they shine yes you've always loved prisms loved them And um, we're like a prism. And when we're in our flow, the light can shine through and be those beautiful rainbows. But if we're blocked, the light gets stopped and we're unable to shine bright. Wow. I love that that's like you that stuck out to you. Definitely. I didn't underline that or anything, but you saying that sounds so beautiful and Mm -hmm. it's so true. Um, The first thing I took away from this chapter and starting with um, dangers of the trail is um, once we start to begin to sense our real potential, that prism um, and the wide range of possibilities, that scares us. So we go back to blocks and we are at week 10. And if you have been doing this with us, you've probably noticed some things happening. So that's why I think she's bringing it up now because uh, last week we talked about U-turns and like, this is the time when like things are starting to flourish and actually happen. We're going to be um, trying to block ourselves. Unblock ourselves. No, no. Like we're our insides. Oh, we personally are trying to block ourselves and these tools are going to help us unblock. Because yeah. I love when she says we slam on the psychic brakes. When yeah, things it's like start you moving start, and grooving, it's like all of a sudden you're like, no, no. You start getting like intel from the universe or things. And you, yeah, you slam on the psychic brakes. I love it. I know. But the ways we're going to uh, block ourselves in this chapter, she's saying, is with toxic habits. And the ones she talks about. Is First, she talks about food. Overeating. Yep. Which That's is a big one. Relatable because to me. Even if I'm not hungry and I get like in a zone and then I'm like eh, let me just go and grab something out of the fridge yes and it stops London. the creative process and you can just like change yourself change your mind and unfocus on your work literally same mm-hmm. I will be like okay I'm actually I'm sitting down okay I'm hungry I'm gonna go get food yep. and I use food as a distraction 
all the time. And you wouldn't think of it as a block, really. You're like, oh, I'm just hungry. But actually, that's a block. Yeah. And and you're probably actually not hungry. It's become a habit. Like, oh, I don't want to deal with these psychic psychic breaks <laughs> but I, not just oh I'm gonna take a break and get food it's also the like I'm gonna eat so much that I feel so full and dull that I can't work have you ever been like if you are working like a nine-to-five job and you have a lunch break and you decide to get Chipotle or something you come back to work and you're just sluggish for oh, like three hours because you're digesting Chipotle it's Yes, but mm-hmm. you think that's block. You, I just don't want to work. <laughs> I don't yeah, go well, I just mean the five. food you eat obviously affects your like energy levels and yes, oh all that. for sure it does. I saw this image the other day, and it showed like what fifteen hundred calories looks like of like delicious food compared to fifteen hundred calories of junk food. The delicious, the like healthy food looked so good. It was like a buffet. Really? Yes. It was like all these veggies, all these fresh fruits, fruits, all these homemade things. And then the other was like a bag of chips, a soda, and like some uh, 7-Eleven style pizza thing. It's just so much easier. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. I've been trying to cook. You've been home. meal prepping. Yeah. and it's You meal prepped how many smoothies? Seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a little celebration moment. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it just takes time. It it's, does, it's and money. Job. It's more expensive. What? I thought it was cheaper. Well, to eat healthy, isn't that you know? Well, like I don't know, buying a banana is seventy cents. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. It's not that much more. Um. Okay, so she starts with food, then she goes into work, sex, drugs, alcohol. <laughs> these are all. Alcohol. <laughs> these are all ways. To block. To block the creative flow. Even obsessive thoughts are a block. And even work is a block. And what I thought was interesting, well, we'll get to workaholism, Mm -hmm. but what I thought was interesting was these obsessive thoughts being a block, like just like whatever it is you're thinking, which that is a habit. Um, I, I thought it was interesting, like I always think of creativity as... Okay, I'm going to sit down and write my script. And for you, I'm going to crochet 600 Mm -hmm. Pop-Tarts. But that's a little inside joke um, if you listen back to episode one. Okay, so um, (laughs) but she was like, if you're listening to those obsessive thoughts, it drowns out the little voice that suggests rearranging the living room, taking a pottery class, trying a new top on at the store. That's stimmied. She wrote stimmied. but anyways, those are things that I don't really think of as creativity. And it is creativity. It is. Like, like I didn't I thought I was just like trying to unblock so I could sit down and write, but you have to unblock so you can try on that cute top. Exactly. And okay, so are you <laughs> saying then these thoughts of of things are they blocked? So when we go to the store and try on a top, are we ignoring the work? Or is that something we want to do? I'm saying Julia says that trying on a new top at the store. um, (laughs) Is it a block or is it not? Because I would think it's a block. Oh, I reread this. Yeah. I read this wrong. She said trying a new top on that story that's stimmied. Oh, I still don't get it. But I understand, though, (laughs) what she is trying to say, which is like, Alex, do you get it? Oh, no, okay. I'm not following any of this. So here, okay. this okay. is what I think. Okay. London, this is what I think. Tell me. When we are, let's say I'm getting down to finally do some work, and then I'm like, uh, you know what? Let me organize my yarn for just like five minutes, put some things away. That's a block. Let me go and run down to my car and grab something. That's a block. Let me go and do something before I start the work is blocking you from just starting the work. That's very relatable and I relate to that. Yeah. I think that is a block. I, I think too. that's our brains going, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to sit mm-hmm. down. Because we can run to the car and get that thing Later. after. Unless it's your computer. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay, great. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Moving Food, on. <laughs> work, and sex are all good in themselves. It's it's the abuse that makes them creativity issues. Yeah, so you have to just know when, when you're abusing it. Yes. So okay. let's like chart our kind of um, work and what we but, do and, and then see what, what it is And what she says is becoming aware of these blocks 
becoming aware that, oh, like you said, maybe every time I go sit down to be creative, I get up to go get food. Just becoming aware of it is um, what will be the, wait, 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 I wrote it down. Becoming aware of blocks will, <laughs> will fuel our U-turns. The blocks will no longer work effective. Bingo. But, okay. So once we I know just got what my they blood are, drawn. I think I'm a little woozy. I think woozy. you're a little woozy. <laughs> okay. That's okay. okay. This chapter is challenging. I got to say, it, it has a lot in it. But so pretty much once we become aware of these habits, they'll no longer be effective. On yes. Us. And she goes, buzz, 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 swat. Yes. She and we want to swat that. the blocks. Okay. So the next thing is workaholism. And this one's big for me because I think in a way workaholism is actually, I've looked at it as a positive. It's like, oh, look at me. I'm working all night long. I'm not going out. I'm not doing anything besides working. And that's going to then put me ahead in life and give me that upper hand to people that are just living. And that is not healthy thinking. I knew first of all that you would relate to workaholism yes that is my biggest block um, mine too i well like but all you work creatively though through the night yes i i have been known to like at one point i had five day jobs plus i was volunteering at the boys and girls club and i was i was living at home at this point i didn't need five jobs no no one does but i I used work like it was this like I was also trying to, you know, be an artist. Mm -hmm. And I I almost think I use like, OK, well, I'm working. Well, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to volunteer. I have to go over here. I have to do that. And it's a, it's my way of not even starting a project. So there's a, a there's a couple ways. Then there's to a look couple at ways of workaholism because you're also like working, but on your crochet and your art. But like, you don't stop all no. night long, all morning. And I've gotten better with time, like a little bit more balance in my life. But I do think it's hard to define workaholism as a block because so often it's looked at as a positive, especially in our society now. It's like very normal that, oh, people work 80 hours a week. And that's like how you get the big paychecks and how you make your success. And that crazily enough to me, isn't actually the best way to go yeah turns out you don't need to work as much apparently for your not creativity to come out yeah yeah Woo. and and another workaholics usually also avoid fun it's something we do as much as avoiding creativity is avoiding fun when was the last time like we talk about this a lot we'll go somewhere like a vacation, and after four days, we get so anxious. We're like, oh we're my like, god! But I need to be working. I have to be working on my. I art. can't I have to be, be writing. I yeah, to. and we don't allow ourselves to have fun. And I, in small doses, I can do it. I can't spend four days just doing nothing. Oh my gosh! I'm so the bad at anxiety, it. Anxiety. Everything I feel like. Oh my gosh! I'm, I'm not being creative or or getting to that next step that I need to get to with my art, and. I, I, we almost have to treat it like if we did have a nine to five job, you have your allotted vacations and there's I feel like it would be way less stressful if you just like, no, in one week I'm coming back to it. Well, it's a different thing, though, because when you do work a nine to five job, you have these vacations, a lot of times paid vacation time. So when you're on those trips, you're still getting paid, whereas if you are an artist doing this full time. You don't have that support and knowing that like if I miss this opportunity when I'm out of town, mm -hmm. that's a huge paycheck that, you know, you would have gotten if you weren't enjoying yourself. So it's, just, so it's, it's a balance. But what I have found, because as you know, this month I've kind of been taking a little break for myself mm -hmm. and I have found that I'm. I'm like life experience is what fuels creativity. So just by taking that break, I'm actually bringing more creativity into my life. So it's this like catch 22. Is that the word? Yeah, I think I think it's just us accepting that like time off actually is what you need to do. 
and, and have fun and have fun Wait, and have, have fun. fun when's the last time i had fun i hope yesterday <laughs> i'm trying to think <laughs> i did i did have fun yesterday i was filming musicals in real life but that was work <laughs> but you were having fun but i was having fun. i was having fun yesterday working too oh so isn't that interesting yeah it's more just like once it <laughs> I hits know six when's o'clock the last time yeah okay i had fun last week in san diego yeah, you went on the trip. I was trip. doing yeah, some. Yeah, I, I went to Lake yeah. Crescent. I yeah. had fun. Okay. We've been doing it. But okay, we're having fun. Too much <laughs> fun, too much work, not good. Um, there's a quiz that she gives us. I know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the one that really stuck with me. Okay. I fall in, you're supposed to ask uh, answer, seldom, often, never. I fall in with other people's plans and fill my free time with their agendas. Seldom, often, or never. Often. Yes. Yes. You do one, often. That one really struck a chord. I I definitely, people tell me what the plans are, and I go, okay, that's the plan. So I'll do it instead of me coming up with my own plan. Was yep. that, did any stick out to you? Well, the first one, I work outside of office hours, seldom, often, or never. I said often, but what has really helped me is I used to live in a live-work art studio. Yeah, you did. So I literally <laughs> lived in my work. Yeah. And that was a terrible way to have work-life balance. So now waking up at home, driving to my studio, working, and then around 6, 6.30, I go home. I'll still sometimes bring crochet with me, but at least I'm not like in the same environment. So I think switching up where yeah. you work and where you live is really important. <sighs> Even if you take your work to like a coffee shop or somewhere else, I think that definitely helps with the work-life balance. But still, working outside of office hours is tough when you're doing it on your own. Well, I'm just going to have another pity party for a second. It is hard if like, so art is your full-time job writing stand-up is what I sh should be paying the bills right um there isn't there isn't a boss or anyone telling you when like I work outside of office hours I don't have any office hours well that's something that she says maybe we figure out maybe we figure maybe out maybe you office figure hours. out some office hours yeah um also I allow myself free time between projects I say often because I'm so burnt out when a project ends a lot of times I like have to force myself to like I go back to work which is not healthy either no I think you I think you like burn yourself out with these projects and deadlines and I'm always the one telling you like take three months off you just you just got a huge job it got done like you deserve a break but I find that you keep well, it's like it takes a while for that creativity to bubble back up. So when a project is so big, maybe it's not three months, but a lot of times I need like two weeks just to recoup a yeah. sense of myself and then go and back into the next one. And while you're taking those two weeks, though, are you anxious or are you like, I deserve this? Anxious. Yes, that's what I mean. I don't think you take a break where you're like, I'm allowed to have mm -hmm. this break. Yeah. So... This was a good exercise, the workaholism quiz. She has 20 questions, and you answer them all with sel seldom, often, or never. And I think it's a good exercise to do. I have a feeling a lot of people are workaholics if you are trying to start it's, something yourself. Yeah. But it's, it's refreshing yeah, if knowing you're we your don't own have to boss, be. Being a workaholic is, is probably what you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But let us know in the comments below. Yeah. I like how she talks about the Cinderella complex. Me too. Yeah. I underlined that. We're always dreaming of the ball and always experiencing the, the ball, ball and chain. chain. So, I wrote, ha, huh, good one, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great play on words. <laughs> so. Um, and she goes, workaholism is a block, not a, a building, building block. block. And she, it was wants us to post that in our workspace so that we are reminded about it because it is so important it's not a building block to just keep working it's gonna actually end up blocking us because we're so burnt out mm -hmm. um and i thought it was interesting looking at all these blocks as building blocks interesting thanks were they colorful or 
Um, I drew a little, I drew a few building blocks. Where did I draw them? <laughs> Just squares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put on it, like, alcohol, food, like all the blocks. And then They're, built them. Where did I put it? Oh, I right, mean, right here. Oh, it's beautiful. They're cubes. Cube. They're 3D blocks. <laughs> yeah. Really, really nice. Um, okay, so anyways... Um, I wanted to ask you what I wrote down here was in what ways do you overwork yourself? I would say like just the thoughts of anxiety are constantly in my head. So in that I'm like always working because I'm always trying to think I don't give myself even when I'm driving in the car a lot of times just a moment of zen. So I feel like there's always that underlying lining thoughts that are just going, which is equaling work. Yeah, you're right. You're always thinking about what project next? What mm-hmm. should I do? Da-da-da. Like even driving. Yep. Okay. So that in itself is overworking. And then, yeah, just jumping from one thing to the next, always having multiple things that I'm juggling instead of just focusing on one thing and checking it off. I'll kind of bounce around and that that mm-hmm. isn't so productive. What about you? Um. For me, it's saying yes to every opportunity. And that to me is like overworking in a way because I'm I'm just like r- running from one thing to the next. A lot of stand-up shows that I don't necessarily need to say yes to, um, I'm saying yes to so that I can just like get the time in and do the reps and do the, get the practice. So I think I'm overworked in like the things I say yes to and I'm not really focused on like one thing at a time well, we're the same right now I'm I have accountability system set up for two different scripts I don't know if that's overworking if that's like maybe I should just write the one script and when that's done have the accountability that does sound like a better option I have an accountability set up for stand-up jokes and then for a pilot and a movie and they're like I'm trying to work on them all simultaneously is that workaholism well we all have the same amount of time in the day as Beyonce I know you know know. they always say but you know what they say after that they go what but she has has assistance yeah 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 I've heard she has people to delegate okay that's true but there is a lot of time in the day when we focus it and use it in the best way possible. So as long as those accountability workshops are actually holding you accountable. They're not workshops. Okay. They're like Zooms. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, as long as they're doing what they're meant to do, I feel like, yeah, you have time to do three different things at once. But when it hits the end of the day, you're done instead of continuing to work all the way into midnight and the next morning. Yeah. But did you know what when this book was written, I guess what in the 80s? There are uh, workaholic anonymous meetings springing up, and these may help you enormously. Really? Yeah. Really? I've never heard of a workaholic anonymous meeting, but apparently they're a thing. I think there's an anonymous for everything. Everything? Mm-hmm. Mm. I, but I didn't know either. Ghosts anonymous? <laughs> Ghosts? I mean, for everything. No, right? London. Okay. It would be more for, <laughs> for problems. Okay. <laughs> Maybe someone's really worried. Sometimes I wonder. Okay. So um, the next thing she talks about is a drought. Which I which really needed this chapter right now because I've been freaking out because I'm in a drought. Oh, you are. I am. I was like, this doesn't re- relate to me. Oh, well, <laughs> for me, it does. Because okay, talk to, tell me about so, your drought. Okay. There's this writer's strike and actress strike going on. Yes, there is. And somehow it's now hit my work too because I had this amazing job lined up oh. and it got taken away. And ever since then, what was the job? I had to sign an NDA. But now it's taken away. I know, but what if it comes up and Okay, fine. So it was a good one. <sighs> it was know. a good one. If an NDA is involved, you know it's good. Le- if London signed an NDA and didn't even tell her sister, Like she's you guys don't have to worry about her signing NDAs. I really want this job. She won't say a thing. So ever since that's been taken away, I felt like, you know, my self-worth I put in my work. So now I'm like, I'm worthless. I'm in a drought. Oh, my God. I can relate. I know. And 
what I loved about this is that she says droughts are necessary. They may go on for a very, very, very long time. She didn't say that. Yes, she did. Very, very, very. No, I added that. But if you listen to the audio book. She was very <laughs> lengthy with the very. And very long but time. but they come to an end. A flower will bloom. Oh, I thought that was so beautiful. Right. She goes, Droughts are terrible, droughts hurt, droughts are long, airless seasons of doubt that make us grow, give us compassion, and blossom as unexpectedly as the desert with sudden flowers. Oh. I it was just music to my ears. Droughts do end. And morning pages, she says, are the that's the tool to get tool out of your to get out of it. And that's just made me even more gung ho with my morning pages. My hand, my wrist is literally hurting. Because you've been doing Because morning. I've been viciously writing so hard in the morning. <laughs> she says, Yeah, when in a drought, morning pages are the most important. And um she does give for each thing she, she she mentions like what to do in each situation. So when you're in a drought, do your morning pages. When you are being blocked become aware of these toxic patterns um food sex alcohol drugs all that workaholism and just by becoming aware of it it's gonna um trick us into being unblocked yeah the path will emerge yes and i just this really gets me excited and also okay here's the other thing i had to look through my camera roll yesterday um, to pull up, I just did a really cool video for Michaels and they needed all these like, see, I'm in a drought and I'm working, but I <laughs> was pulling up all these like old clips and I thought my last drought, it was in 2021. Your last drought? My last drought. Okay. And 2021, I felt like I was doing nothing. I was like, I don't have anything going on. And I'm looking through my camera roll and I was like, this was such a creative time. I was doing so much. I had so many things going on. So sometimes when you're like in something in the moment, it's hard for you to reflect on like all that you were you are actually doing. Mm. So that was kind of a nice exercise too. I was like, I did so much. Yeah. And I felt like I was drought. <laughs> I was drought. I was drought. Um, well, yeah. D- do your morning pages. I she She explains why. Just sometimes it helps me to know like, okay, do my morning pages. Why, Julia? Um, She says to write is to write things. She used W-R-I-T, R-I-G-H. To write is to write things. Sooner or later, always later than we like, our pages will bring things right. A path will emerge and insight will be a landmark that shows the way out of the wilderness Dancer, sculptor, actor, painter, playwright, poet, performance artist, potter, artists, all. The morning pages are both our wilderness and our trail. So she's saying eventually. The drought will end. Eventually by doing the pages, we'll get some insights. That makes me very happy. So <sighs> it's, it's kept me on track for my morning pages because it just makes me believe. Yeah. And there's also one thing about like. Sorry, I'm getting text messages. Ah. Um, one thing about like this drought, I it, that's another thing about being your own boss. Um, when I I have a lot of friends that are PAs and work in production, and there's always hiatuses. That's like how they set up the schedule. And I had one friend that during the hiatus was always so stressed like oh my god like what am I gonna do for work and I got it and I always was like but you know you have a job coming back in like a month like you know that so like give yourself this time to relax I think it was actually a week hiatus for this one it was like just give yourself the week and that's kind of what we have to do without knowing for certain that we have work coming back in one week because we'll never know that but we have to act as if like oh I know work is coming again so in this hiatus let me do my morning pages and let me just like relax and enjoy and pretend it as if it is a hiatus with the job coming right back I like that a lot because it's true also like when you think about somebody else it's like oh they're fine no worries. That yeah, person's and I, gonna be a like work again, do things again, and in your head you're like, it's never gonna happen. For yeah, and but for me, for me, yeah, it's gonna happen for, for them. them. Yeah, <laughs> it's just mean if you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, 
Anyways. Yeah. The other thing, okay, the next part of this is fame. And we'll get into that, but I don't know where this this falls into place, but I think it's somewhere in the middle of drought and fame. And um, (laughs) I saw a quote about five years ago, you were dreaming about where you are today. Mm. And I just loved that because we work so hard. We try to do so much. And it's true. Like five years ago, wouldn't you be happy with where you are today? Yeah. 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 Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yes, but I had some strict deadlines by 30. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> oh, and you're right in that. Yeah. Cusp there. Um, yeah. So, but yes, I, I think like I've achieved a lot of goals that younger Chase would have like killed for. Even not like all work goals, just like life mm-hmm. goals mm-hmm. and where you are in yeah, life. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Especially if we take the fame out of it, which is what we're supposed to do. This part, you you related to the drought. I think this relates the fame more to you. gave me a like I could take a deep breath um she says fame is addictive and always leaves us hungry it's a spiritual drug instead of writing or like she uses actors first instead of acting being about acting it becomes about being a famous actor instead of writing being about writing it becomes about being recognized not about being published and that is so true it takes the like oh, I have to be renowned instead of just, like, do the work. Because she defines the difference between, like, success and fame. Mm -hmm. And we need to think about more just being successful, whether that's successful in your soul, successful for what you define it as, not famous, as in how does it look to them? How is it looking to other people what we're doing? The question isn't, is the work going well, which is what the question should be. The question is, how does it look to them? And that's too ego driven. Oh my God. Yeah. So to detox the fame drug. Um, so like if you're looking, she uses the example of People Magazine because this was the ni- early 90s. Mm-hmm. Um and and you might be looking at People Magazine and Online. feeling really bad about yourself. But I think now looking at celebrities on Instagram would be the equivalent. Um, and if you're looking at Instagram celebrities, we'll get to friends later. Right now specifically you're looking at celebrities and you're feeling like less than. The anecdote to that is coddling yourself. Send a fan letter from to yourself. yourself to yourself which i've done what a few times really oh it's in the so mail? fun oh yeah i said congrats on your art in vogue magazine um but it, is it in vogue no no that that was you just like visualizing manifesting. yeah but can you send a fan letter like a real fan letter like i London, mean you, i can i'm so proud of everything you've accomplished yeah like a real grounded fan letter yeah because she says self-approval is really what we're after in the long run. Um, so detox the like, oh my God, comparing to celebrities by just coddling yourself. And treating yourself love. with like a precious object. Because um, that'll make you strong. Fame. She says what we're really scared of is that without fame, we won't be loved as artists or as people. Oh gosh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Um, when the fame drug hits, go to your easel, your typewriter, um, or a computer will do, your camera <laughs> or clay, pick up the tools of your work and begin to do just a little creative play. The only cure for the fame drug is creative endeavor. And so, I, that's like even the small creative endeavors are going to help with this. Yeah. I just, yeah, I really, really enjoyed the like just like do the work like ask yourself am I doing the work instead of do people like Like the the work work? and that just shift anytime I write jokes I'm because I've bombed enough to know that people aren't gonna like a lot of stuff I write in the like are they gonna like this and it's always in my head while I'm writing like is this good enough for them Instead of just, like, deal with that later. Yep. Let Leave it to the critics. I think she brings that up. Let the critics be the one Ugh. to 
poke and prod and do. <laughs> it's your job to just do the work. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. So then we move on to competition. And oh boy, if you pick up a magazine or, or even, even the alumni, alumni news, news and somebody you know has gone further, faster, towards your dream, very relatable. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying that proves it can be done, your fear will say he or she will succeed instead of me. Yes. And I just have to say, when this was written and she said, pick up a magazine or the alumni news to find out if someone's doing better than you, we now pick up our phone and open an app and see everyone's Everything highlight reel. everyone's doing. I would never know, to be honest, that one of my friends is a lead in a Broadway show unless, I like, the, it's not on the headline in a magazine or, like, I wouldn't have seen it if this was the 90s. I know because I'm opening my phone. And yep. that is, that was like a, whoa, we are so, like, we were talking... Mo, our mom, one one time said, like, yeah, back in the day, like, I would have to call up a friend to see how they were doing to know what successes they were having. I wouldn't just know. And we're being presented with, like, the very best version of everyone's life. Oh, my and gosh. This I really like, though, instead of saying that proves it can be done. I really try my best to remember that because when you see somebody doing something in line with what you want to achieve, that should be just like an aha moment. Like, oh, this is being presented to me because I am in line with that goal too. And it's a positive that I'm getting to see them doing this because then I know it's possible for myself. And when we look at our competition though, like, yes, that's good if you see your competition. She calls it competition, but like, you know, anyone else in your field of work, and um, you're able to be like, yay, yay for them. That's more for me. But if you're not, what it's doing is taking our eye away from our own through line. So she says, ask the right questions. Instead of what's the use? What do I have to offer? It's already been done. You're going to ask yourself, did I work on my play today? Did I make that deadline? Do I have the, the network that I need to network with? Like, It's the right questions instead of like, what's the use? And just stick with the, stick with your own through line. That's all we can do. And um, this is keeping us grounded, I feel like. Instead of having our head in the clouds, this is keeping us like grounded on earth. Yes. It makes it just like, yeah, it's not airy fairy. Like, oh, Mm -hmm. everyone else, you can't even control it. No. Trying to see why I underlined this. We make excuses for our... I did too. For our avoidance. Excuses focused on others. Oh, that's why. Somebody else has probably said it, done it, thought it. I think that all the time. Um, We must attend to what it is... Oh, we must attend to what it is that our inner guidance is nudging us towards. Just attend to it. Our inner guidance with all this work we're doing with morning pages, with being creative, with play, like there's something that's going to be nudging you like this is what I want to do. And it's a little nudge. And our job is to explore it, attend to it. It's not about like if it gets done and I'm not successful. And it doesn't matter if it's something that's already been done or someone's already done. We do every it's like I think Picasso said steal like an artist. Like everything's already been done. Take something from one thing, take it in the other and just make it organic to yourself. And when she said this, okay, this is what I thought of. What? I listen to a lot of like spiritual talks and they're all saying the same thing. It's all the same thing. It's just how they say it. So like Eckhart Tolle says stuff differently than Abraham Hicks and she says it differently than Michael Singer. But at the end, they're all saying the same thing. So that clicked with me when it was like it's all been done before like don't worry about like oh no has someone else done it someone else hasn't said it the in your voice so I realized that with like these spiritual teachers are all saying the same thing this is so nice yeah that's just in so a different true way that resonates with me mm-hmm. um and originality oh the ego wants to be best first not just good which, come on, we can just be good, okay? It's it's responding um, to everyone else's work and it wants to be original. 
Originality is the process of remaining true to ourselves. So we just have to go back to being true to ourselves. Sounds so simple. So simple, (laughs) but so challenging. And get the ego Um, out of there. Many hits are sure things. Oh, oh, saying like a lot of times if you're like, oh, it's been done before, you're not even going to work on it. But a lot of things that become successful, you only realize that at the end of the process. You don't, your ego didn't start by being being like this is going to be a hit you just never know it goes back to just like it all being part of the process though we have to enjoy the process and it's not focusing on the final outcome it's about enjoying all those little baby steps that we've talked about in chapters before to get to that final outcome yeah which i mean it's all it's such a beautiful little message it here all in this sounds chapter. so simple yeah, can you do? Look, can we recap? That was the chapter. That's what, the chapter. So basically, she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't okay. We say it's so simple, but it's not. First, we have to get clear on what our blocks are. So, whatever thing you're abusing to get out of line with your creativity, we need to get clear on what it is and start not doing that thing when we're in the creative flow. For us, it's working and eating. Workaholism's a big one. I don't for know if everyone. eating, eating you said isn't it, as you, much for me, but I do like jot off and I do notice use it yeah. as an excuse. Um, workaholism is bad. Wow, who wow. knew? Who knew? So we got a little quiz <laughs> to figure out how bad it is for you. Workaholism. It's you're not gonna like create more work by working so much. You're only gonna like become tired and burned out. Mm-hmm. So. Have fun. Allow yourself to have fun. And don't Ugh. worry if a drought comes because it will end. And it, it will end. Um, and and then, fame. And then fame and competition like, oh, Ugh. my God, get out of there. That's your ego. Yes. No, we are not comparing. What's the saying? Check your ego at the door. I, uh, it sounds right. It sounds like a really popular Check thing people ego. say. Check your ego. Check your ego. Door. Who cares? All you're doing is the job that, like, this creative whatever force you want to think is inside of you is trying to create something with you as the creator being the vessel. So, like, whoa. Like, that's your job. Your job that's is it. just to create. All right. Okay. And then we got some tasks. Okay, now I gotta be honest. What? You didn't do your homework? I, okay, I've had a busy week. And (laughs) I, I did the chapter, I took my notes, and I was like, great, I'm gonna do the assignments as I'm driving here. It's okay. Listen, I have four freeway changes. I, there were lanes closed, there were, you know, accidents, and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm going to do the assignments right here, right now with you. It felt a little dangerous. I agree. But I, I started. I You told me you were doing the exercises while, while driving, and I was like, she better not have that book out on the freeway. <laughs> I Oh, I did. Oh, But gosh, no, even Chase. worse, then I took a picture of it, oh, and I was looking on. at it on my phone. It was <laughs> dangerous. Is dangerous. This is what I do for the podcast. I wanted to be prepared. You're supposed to just be light and live. So anyways, I'm going to do my best here. (laughs) Great. The first task is the deadlies. I definitely didn't do this Yeah, this one one is impossible to do driving. Okay, (laughs) because (laughs) what you're supposed to do is take seven little... You're going to be dead. (laughs) Yeah, you will be dead. Um, Yikes. You take seven little pieces of paper and label each one at the top (laughs) with uh, alcohol, drugs, sex, work, money, food, family, and friends. So each paper has a title. You crumple it up and stick it in a little bag. Or a, a hat. Or a hat. Yeah, tr- it's not like I haven't done this exercise right. before. I know. I've, I've done it yeah. every time. I've, okay. You mush them around and you pick one out. Whichever one you get, the universe sent to you for a reason. Mm-hmm. So You do this seven times. Guess what? You put it back in the bag. You might be picking out alcohol for seven every seven times. times. And you have to dig deeper each <laughs> time. And that is where the real work gets done. So whichever ones you pick out, there's a purpose for it. You list five things that you think are, you know, blocks or the reasons that it's happened and come up in your life. And it, it helps you unblock. Five ways in which it has had a negative impact on your life. That's all you're doing it, when you pull it out. 
Did you do this exercise? Yeah, I did it. How long did it take you? A uh, few minutes. It what is hard London? though. A it's few hard. Minutes? It's hard. It took me longer. Yeah, probably like 10 minutes. This is a long exercise. Maybe 15 minutes. Food. Of course. What? How has it had a negative impact? Well, let me try to find it again. <laughs> okay. Food. It. How has it had a negative effect? Too much money. Um, it costs too much. Yeah. Distraction from work. Mm. I stress out about weight, you know, as mm-hmm. people do. Mm-hmm. Um, I choose easy, unhealthy options. Oh yeah, actually, this probably is really easy to say how food. Has yeah, food was impacted. an easy one, but you pretty could much do it with all of them. I'll do this when I get home. Yeah, it does take time, but it's a good exercise. It's not fun, um, but not all the exercises are. And so. is it just like what is? I don't know what the purpose is. Is it just to gain clarity of what's negatively impacted your life? I think so. Okay. And to see like the patterns, like when you do get one more than once, like digging deeper and deeper and deeper into something. Yeah. Gets you. Gets did, you what thinking. did you get more than once? Um, if you remember. Three of them I got more than once. I don't remember off the top of my head. I have mm. to open up my papers. But, you know, I got drugs more than once. And I don't use drugs. Yeah. So that wasn't negatively That one was us. very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say how did it negatively impact you um i said not a distraction no use um i get anxious if i ever do partake mm-hmm. so i don't i don't know it wasn't a good one for me to get okay but maybe Great. i have to think longer <laughs> how have drugs negatively <laughs> impacted your life okay Okay, this one was fun. I did this one. Make a quick list of things you love. Happiness touchstones for you. River rocks, willow trees, cornflowers. Um, willow tree. Aunt Minnie's crumble pie. Or crumb All right, pie. list off some of your faves. Okay, I put fairy doors. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Julia's. Pretty nail polish. Healthy indoor plants. Simple zen yoga spaces. Aww. Well, I wrote mine in this cute little birthday card that says happy birthday, cutie. That's cute. I know. I thought it was a fun spot. But yeah, I was swimming in the ocean, ballet class, fresh flowers, wearing fun outfits, family card games, tilt a whirl. Oh, <laughs> post this list where it can console you and remind you of your own personal touchstones. You may want to draw one of the items, acquire it. If you love blue bel- velvet, put it on your dresser. Okay, the next one, the awful truth. I I started doing this in the car. Mm. Answer the following questions. Tell the truth, she says. What habit do you have that gets in the way of your creativity? I wrote self-doubt and television. Mm, I put socializing. Mm. Um, Tell the truth. What do you think might be a problem? I didn't get that. What do you mean, what might be a problem? I said not trusting that I'm good enough. But like just just completely separate from the first question. I think so. And then what do you plan to do about that habit or problem? I didn't know what. So I said with. What did I say? Did I even say it? I said just do it. Oh, you said just do it. I said just do it. Oh, I didn't. I, but she goes to the next one. What is your payoff in holding on this block? I'm saying the socializing one is a block. Mm-hmm. I said the payoff is being liked. Right. And distracting yourself from your truth. <laughs> but no, but that's not a payoff. The payoff is the being liked. Right. Okay. It's not a payoff for me to distract myself from the truth. No, it's a negative. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, Which friends believe in you and your talent? Of course I put you. Yes. And which friends make you doubt yourself? Of course I put you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we won't say who we put for that. Um, but she says, what is the payoff in keeping your destructive friends? If the answer is I like them, the next question is why? Um, this is getting dark. Yeah. My, this one's a challenging My one. destructive friends I keep, I think I said, because I don't want to burn any bridge like this, especially in like the arts. Like you don't want to like be burning bridges networking networking that's how you get the job so i don't know what destructive habits do your destructive friends share with your destructive self 
I put like socializing and going oh, out. Oh, socializing. Okay. <laughs> We don't like socializing here, okay? <laughs> you know, she says in chapter one, there is no right or wrong way to do these exercises. So, <laughs> um, and which constructive habits do your constructive friends share with your constructive self? I put you as an example oh. because you're very good at just like getting the work done and not socializing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You can say no like nobody's business. That is true. So I I liked that. The thing is, I put you in that you're so organized with your to-do list. Oh, really? And that you just check things off. Yeah. Oh, look so, at that. You know. That's sweet. Isn't it? Okay. Setting the bottom line. Next, next question. Working with your answers to the questions above, try setting a bottom line for yourself. Begin with five of your most painful behaviors. I wrote down my five painful behaviors. I didn't. Eating. <laughs> Socializing. <laughs> <laughs> Comparing the fame thing she talked about and not believing in myself. Those are good ones. Thank you. I don't know if eating is a painful behavior, but like... If it's a block, though, and it gets to the point where yeah. it is stopping your creativity, yeah. I think it is. Okay. I think so. Now... If you notice that, she, these are the examples she said. If you notice that your evenings are typically gobbled up by your boss's extra assignments, then a rule must come into play, no work after six. I want to read the next one she wrote. If you wake at six, you could write for an hour if you were not interrupted to look for socks and make <laughs> breakfast and do irony. Oh, mom life. I know. The rules might be no interrupting mommy before 7 a.m. Uh-uh-uh. If you're working too many jobs in too many hours, you may need to look at your billing. Are you pricing yourself appropriately? Do some footwork. What are others in your field receiving? Raise your prices and lower your workload. Sounds good to me. So the bottom line she put. I love these bottoms, bottom lines. Yeah, that's why I, I actually was like, she already did the, the I exercise so for me. One, I will no longer work weekends. Two, I will no longer bring work with me on social occasions. That darn socializing <laughs> getting in the way of everything. Work. I will no longer place my work before my creative commitments. No more canceling plan piano lessons or drawing class because of a sudden new deadline. I love that. I know what I do it all the time. Me too. I just did. I canceled everything. I'm driving down to San Diego That's for right. shows. Yeah. Okay. I will no longer postpone lovemaking to do late night reading for work. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I will no longer accept business calls at home after six. Okay. She okay. has some bottom lines. See, the one I relate to the most is like the like, I I won't bring work with me on social occasions. I think anytime I'm, I am going to go on a trip or something, I'm like, oh, good. I'll have some time to write and I'll have some time to. And because for us, I guess that's work. Yeah. Um, oh, I am not going on a vacation without a crochet hook and yarn. I'm sorry, Julia. There is no way. Even yeah, if I'm going, I, I'm going to like crochet means, something fun. I think she means office work. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a, a separate bottom line? No. I said sounds good next to hers. Okay. Sounds good. Cherishing. List five small victories. This is where it gets fun again. Okay. She really took us on a roller coaster with these exercises. Okay. So tell me. This is the last. Cherishing is the last yeah. exercise. So tell me um, what your five small victories are. I Started crocheting the step and repeat for my wedding. It's very Ooh. fun. I got a video in early for Michael's. Ooh. And they asked me to do another one. Wow, London. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of wedding stuff, you know. But I handmade my veil and mm -hmm. it works. Yes, I heard. You got your wedding invites out. I. Yes. Oh, no. Sorry. Was that not That's not my them? last one. Okay. My last one is I did like a... You, uh, an interview with like a YouTube channel and it came out and everyone loves it. What? I haven't seen it. I know. I have to s wait till our podcast each week to hear your updates. Okay, <laughs> you got to send that to me. Okay, yours now. Um. Okay, I'm just doing this off the cuff. Five small vi victories. Mm -hmm. Um. I did yoga every day I was in town last month. That was great. That's a big one. I started meal prepping. I... Um, 
finished like it's a it's still like a draft it's not complete but I finished the second draft of uh the sitcom I'm writing the pilot um what am I at three I said no to a lot. I set up a system for myself. And you bought those pants because yeah, of it. Every time I was telling Alex this, and I did get a car wash after Saturday. Hey. Um, every time I say no, I get up to something that's not a hell yeah. Um, I get a point. And once I reach five points, I get myself a treat. So these pants I got because I said no to five things. And then when Alex came to my show on Saturday, we were going to go to the comedy store after. And we w won't get into how difficult of a decision it was for me not to go to the comedy store. But I finally said no. And I got a car wash. Wow. <laughs> I like this little system. And... I think it's important to celebrate your little victories. Yep. So oh, thank you too. for listening to ours. Little victories. Yeah. Saying no. And, oh, I guess there was one, like, finished a draft. Yeah. Oh, and I did a show last night. It was a 10-minute of new material show. And I it was all brand new material I wrote the night before. And I had more than 10 minutes. Will you tell us which one got the biggest laugh? Oh, sure. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, I'll tell you which one didn't get No, that. no, no. We are uh, celebrating the victories okay. right now, Chase. Okay, I said some of my friends have feel bad for me because I've been single for so long. And I'm like, it's been two years. Like, what do you mean? Like, I, do they not know I once went 18 years <laughs> being single? Like, this is nothing. Oh, good. Okay. That's a great one. Okay, great. That's funny. Guess what? That takes up 20 seconds of a 10-minute <sighs> it is so hard to yeah. write 10 minutes. Let's keep it positive. Okay, you positive. I got a material. joke. I got a yeah, joke. Okay, yeah. yeah. Woo. 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 Um, <laughs> okay, list three nurturing actions you took for your artist. Well, I'll tell you one. Tell me. Fresh sheets on the bed. <gasps> is there nothing better than just... Oh, my gosh. Getting into bed with fresh sheets. Nothing better. Yeah. Nothing better. Tell me one of yours, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's so crazy how much I'm loving yoga that I keep like, that's the only thing I'm thinking of. Um, but yoga, am I allowed to say that? Yes. Again? It's really just been like this, like sanctuary for me. I've been going and it's like you lay in Shavasana at the end and it's this like time for yourself, like carved out. If I try to meditate at home, I'm like, I have too much to do. I have too mm -hmm. much going on. But for some reason in a class, I'm like, this time is allotted for this. Yeah. And I'm much more peaceful. Nice. Um, but three nurturing actions. The other day, I also went to the beach and watched the sunset. Oh, that's beautiful. And I was like, I'm going to make this a part of my thing. weekly thing. And... Um, the bottom lines above are saying like I'm not going to cancel this like thing for me for some for my boss it was I've scheduled it in my calendar every Thursday night at six but lo and behold a stand up show came up yeah. so like what I I'm not going to be doing it now I just change the day or, yeah. or do I say sorry gotta watch the sunset won't be at the stand up show <laughs> No. Like, how do I, I know when to... I think to... you change the day. Like, luckily, the sunset happens every day. Okay. Good good thing. Um, Next one is list three actions you can take to comfort your artist. I really am excited about getting a better morning routine. Oh! You know, I know. I love morning routines. I routine. know. And I just think with this, how she talks about, like, have a fun, fun play set up. Currently, my morning routine is I play Wordle, then Quirtle, then Twitter, <laughs> or whatever it's called. Twitter. Uh, yeah. And then I go to Reddit. What do you mean And then I go called. to my email. It's called Twitter. Now it's called X. What? Yeah. You're behind the times, girl. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and then I start my day and I'm like, let me maybe implement some more creativity into that buildup of email instead of like going online. Um, What's I an action? I love that. Yeah. I, I decided the other night, I was like, I'm going to also put in my calendar, just like I'm putting in watching the sunset. I'm going to put in candle lit okay <laughs> this is a, a taylor swift thing but uh -huh. taylor swift her album midnights and then she has her like 3 a.m edition on she has all these different editions i'm gonna be doing 
um, writing candle at edition midnight's version so i'll be <laughs> taking like time for my artist each night lighting a candle and writing but making it fun and i want to do fun. that for, for me okay i did it one night this week great make three nice promises to yourself keep them Hey, what, can I hear what you promised yourself? I don't want to start work after nine thirty. Sometimes I get caught up in like doing unnecessary things in the morning, so I think I need to be at my desk and be working no later than nine thirty. Um, I know that sounds like a little luxury for a lot of people, but that's one that I really am going to keep. Um, and then implementing that morning routine and allow mistakes. Don't be so hard on yourself. If you mess up, keep going. Okay, good. I love mm-hmm. that. I think you you that sparked a few. I'm going to. Um, I think I want to. The promise to myself is that like I'm going to dedicate time for me every day, and I think that's putting it in my schedule so that when socializing comes up, I can go. Oh wait, I actually already have this scheduled, so I can't. So I'm going to promise myself to schedule in me time. Aww. And I'll work on the other two. That sounds great. And then she says, do something nice for yourself. We kind of already mentioned all the little things. That so that's it. Doing. And that's the chapter. Ten. Wow. Thank you for bearing with us. That's a big one. Yeah, thank you. I was loopy at the beginning. Yeah, but, you're, you're but now I'm it. back. Yeah, you're on it. Okay, great. <laughs> um, but next week is week 11. Yeah, chapter 11. I am going big with morning pages. Okay, me too. Yeah. Okay. This is a big morning pages week, and I hope the drought dries up. It will. Fingers you guys, crossed. thank you so much for listening. Thank you. I hope that any of these tools helped you. Stuck out in some way, shape, or form. Let us know how you're doing with the Artist Way in the morning pages. Leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast app, please re- leave a review and that will really help us. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.